Well, hello. We are live. We're live on Facebook. We are hello, hello. We're live on Facebook. We're live on Instagram. Um, why do I keep seeing this? My stream. I don't know what I'm doing with StreamYard, you know. Anyway, <laughs> hello. How is everyone's new year going? Um, mine is going great. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Um, I'm happy to answer questions you have for the new year. I have a couple of things that I'm just going to kind of randomly go through with you guys. Um, but I love, love, love to get your questions. Hello, Carrie Delaney 3. How are you? Thank you so much for joining Plant Mom 01. Oh my goodness. I need some help with my plants. <laughs> I have quite a few. Well, it's for me, quite a few in my house. My biggest question I shouldn't be doing this right. I should be answering your questions. Anyway, well, I kept, I had the most beautiful lavender plant in San Diego when I lived in San Diego inside my house. It was like growing like crazy. It was thriving. Unfortunately, could not bring it with me when we moved to Texas and I'm in central Texas. And I mean, I tried, believe me, like it was on the top of my list and it just didn't, didn't make it. But um, I have tried and tried and tried with lavender, um, both planted outside and potted inside. I cannot keep lavender alive right now. I do not know what is going on with me. And it is like the one plant that I want. Like, anyway, maybe you can help me. But <laughs> um, Carrie Delaney, and I apologize. I don't know if it's Carrie or Delaney is your first name, but um, you say getting better. That's wonderful. I'm so glad because I am on, I'm, I'm at the end of week five <clears throat> of my being sick. Like I'm about to go into week six. I'm getting better too. So I am so glad you are getting better. Um, I'm so glad <laughs> because I feel for you <laughs> over watering. Maybe I don't no, I generally only water my plants. So, so I have this app called Planta, and I was using that. Um, oh, you have a broken ankle. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's such a pain. I'm so glad you're getting better, though. Um, I can actually say at 40 years old, I have never broken a bone in my body, and I hope to keep it that way. <laughs> um I don't know if I was overwatering it. I was going by what the app told me to do, and then I decided that's not good. Um, it wasn't working out for some of my plants. So I bought this stick um, that you put in your plant, like you just put it in. It reads the moisture level. You take it out. You're not supposed to leave it in the plant. And that's what I've been using to water my plants. No idea. So the outside lavender... Okay, maybe I was overwatering that. See, I feel like my outside lavender was overtaken by the catnip because I planted catnip and lavender together, and the catnip was going crazy and growing like a weed. Um, so I, I kind of like thought maybe the catnip was um, taking over in, for the lavender. But yeah, the weather and environment does matter so, so much. And it so like in San Diego, there wasn't much humidity. And here in Central Texas, there is a lot of humidity. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with the indoor um, care of my plants. Anyway, I have I have four different plants in my office. I have two more that are displaced right now because I had to move them to put up the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree is I've put it away. All my Christmas stuff I did manage to get put away. Um, so I need to put them back. Like I have a rubber plant and a palm. Anyway, my, my lemon plant, we planted a lemon tree in the backyard, um, this past spring and we did everything we could, um, to try to save it because we had one night well, it was actually three nights that were really, really low, but I think the one night it got down to 16. Um, we covered it, and I think it's dead. I hate that. I hate that so much um, because I'm responsible for this living <laughs> thing, um, and, and I failed it. But, <clears throat> yes, catnip mint family spreads like crazy. It absolutely does, and I love it. Like, I planted it because I wanted it to grow like crazy um, along with some rosemary. 
which I also know grows like crazy. I don't know if any of my plants, outdoor plants, made it through the 16 degree freeze we had. Um, it was probably, it was at Christmas. It was right at Christmas. So, oh, well, you tried, don't be too. No, I have had three lavender, three inside lavender plants, four outside lavender plants in a year and a half. And I have not been able <laughs> to keep any of them alive. Um, I think I'm going to try one more time this spring. And instead of getting it at like the um, like Home Depot or Lowe's, I'm going to I'm going to go to a garden center and get a nice lavender plant. That's my <laughs> I'm hoping for. <laughs> Am I being too loud? Okay. My husband's shutting my door because I'm being too loud, which is funny because normally I'm I'm too quiet. <laughs> um, but my my office echoes. So well I'm glad y'all are here. Please throw any comments or questions in the chat box. I'm happy to answer them for you. I haven't I haven't gone live in a few weeks. Of course we had Christmas and New Year's, but it's really mainly because I've been I've just been so sick. Um and I was wearing my glasses for a long time. I know I did a live um, wearing my glasses, which I normally would never do. I don't love the way I look in glasses, but it is what it is. I was trying so hard to show up and be there. Um, okay, so so we got an auto cat feeder, and one of the cats of the three is an over what I think maybe overeater, and worry about the other two. They are getting enough with four feedings a day, two of which is five-eighths of a cup. The other two are a quarter of a cup. That's a big difference. Um, so first and foremost, uh, I will say that do the best you can. Just like y'all are telling me with my plants, y'all, okay, do the best you can. Don't beat yourself up too much. What I would say is that... <clears throat> I don't love dry food and I don't love auto feeders. Um, so kind of like working off of that, uh, I want to let you know why I don't love these things. And it may or may not change what you do. That's completely up to you. I don't love auto feeders because basically you've got to put dry food in it. <laughs> and then I don't love dry food. Um, so I don't love dry food for a number of reasons, especially for our kitties. Okay. Because you can't make, we call it kibble. You probably call it kibble. Most people call it kibble dry food. You can't make it first and foremost, the majority, the overwhelming majority of dry food on the market today, really, really, really terribly poor ingredients. Um, also, you can't make it without a lot of carbohydrate going into it. Our cats are obligate, uh, our cats, all cats, whether they're ours or not, because there are wild cats out there, um, cats are obligate carnivores. They have no nutritional requirements for carbohydrate. So getting something that is on, on average between 40 and 50% carbohydrate is completely out of the realm of what our cats need. I, of course, 100% hands down, they, for thriving, they don't, they do not need it. I would argue that even for surviving, they don't need it because we are seeing more and more cats. They are obese. Like you were saying, they are very obese. Um, they are becoming sedentary because of how obese they are. And look, it is, can be hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It can be really, really difficult to trans transition cats away from a dry food diet because cats can become what we call kibble addicted. They become addicted to those carbohydrates, those starches, those sugars. They break down to sugars in the body. So for all of your cats, I would say there's, there's a process that I'd love to see your cats at the end of the day, at the, at the end of, of when it's all said and done, you know, would love for them to have a species appropriate whole food diet. But if we can just get them onto canned foods, you are going to be doing heads and tails better for your cat. 
Um, so th those are kind of my, that's my base recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they don't need to eat so often. And this is something, again, if you have a kibble addicted cat, you're going to have to slowly work on, but cats in the wild, they're going to spend the majority of their day hunting. And they're probably only going to catch one out of every four or five things, mice generally, that they are hunting. So they are going to spend all day expending a lot of energy, hunting, 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 and they're only getting rewarded a couple, a handful of times a day. So um, now my cats, and every cat is different, my cats tend to eat less in the summer and more in the winter. So in the summer, they generally only eat two meals a day. And in the winter, they generally eat a little bit more um, because it's colder. And their body is um, using more energy to keep their, their body heat up, their body, body temperature up. So I'll feed them a third meal in the day, but generally that third meal is about half of what I would give them in the other two meals. Um, but again, every cat is different and environment plays a role in that. So those are like some of my main suggestions for, um, what you commented. Um, plant mom, any suggestions about licking of the paws? My doodle skin looks great but licks paws. So paw licking, there are so many different things going on. One, um, are, is this something that they're doing all the time? Um, so like all year long, are they doing this? Is this something that only happens seasonally? Is this something that only happens? Are you journaling? Right? So I would, I would start there, especially if this is something that doesn't happen all the time, all year long. Um, so you can start pinpointing what is going on, what things are changing at the same time or near the same time the paw licking is, is going on as well. So we can start pinpointing, okay, do they have maybe a sensitivity or allergy to grass or some other environmental allergen? Um, maybe it's the cleaners that you're using in your home. So, you know, we don't, think a whole, a lot of us don't think a whole heck of a lot about the cleaners we use. We just buy what works, what everybody else uses, what's convenient on the shelf. But these chemicals are, they're toxins, they're poisoning our homes. Now that may not make a huge deal of difference to you as a human. It does, but you may not notice it. Um, because one, you have clothes on, you're not barefoot on the floor all the time. You're not literally eating off of the surfaces that you're cleaning with these products. Um, but your dog and cat are, they are spending all of their time on surfaces and their paw, their paw pads are, um, very, I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of the word now, but they absorb things very easily. This is why, um, for cats especially, but you can do this with dogs. Like I, I tend to recommend putting CBD oil on your cat's paw pads because they are going to absorb it in to their bloodstream through their paw pads. So maybe it is. So that's kind of one of the things I want to challenge you to do. And somebody or uh, Delaney says coconut oil helps. And I do love coconut oil. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I would ideally love to see us figure out why we're looking or your dog is licking their paw pad or their paws so much. Um, and also, even if the rest of their skin is looking great, I don't, you still may want to, uh, go to your veterinarian to do a skin test to make sure there isn't any yeast present or any, you know, like an overgrowth of yeast. So there are so many different things that could be causing the paw licking that instead of just throwing band-aids on it, um, we should get to the bottom of why it's happening so we can address it properly so that it doesn't creep back up and get worse because often with our dogs, um, with our cats too. So our, um, really, really interesting. I just learned this not too long ago. Our gut lining, our gut is epithelial cells. Our skin is epithelial cells. So when there is something wrong in the gut, when there is dysbiosis in the gut, it very quickly and easily shows up in the skin. A lot of times with our dogs, the first place it shows up is on their paws because the body is learning to attack the epithelial cells and 
because of what's going on, the dysbiosis in the gut. So there could be so many different things and so many different reasons that we really want to narrow down what the reason is so we can attack that. <laughs> I hope that was really long winded, but I hope that can help you a little bit. Um, I've started adding Alaskan salmon oil on her raw food. We use organic shampoo. All of that is wonderful. Um, I will say, you know, if I have a love hate relationship with fish, fish oil, it's, I prefer, like if you're going to use a fish oil, use a um, anchovy and sardine fish oil, primarily because the majority of salmon uh, available to us, whether it's salmon, like um, flesh, like that we're eating salmon or salmon oil, they're farmed. Um, I don't, and, and that's not necessarily the best source of salmon. And 100% we do not want salmon from China. There are a lot of, I never want anything from China, but that, that can be really difficult too. So, um, just FYI on that, on her, I love that you're feeding a raw food diet. Um, we use organic shampoo. That's wonderful. I absolutely love four legger. And then depending on what your dog needs, um, the reason that I love four legger so much is I get the unscented and then I can add my animalio essential oils in as needed for whatever your dog needs. Um, tried it with my one cat. He never liked it. The, are you talking about, uh, wet food Delaney? Um, because it can take time and with our cats, our cats are very finicky, very, very picky. So a lot of times we need to find not only the flavor, but the texture that our cat is willing to accept in a wet food. I will also say, especially with my heavier kitties, the only way I was able to get them off of kibble and onto canned wet food was with the very specifically the Vital Essentials freeze-dried mini nibs because they do a, um, forgive me if I get this wrong, but I think it's like a flash freeze dry. It might even be cold. I don't, I, well, obviously it's cold. It's freeze dried. Um, uh, they do a flash freeze with the freeze drying. Um, and that makes it crunchy. So they were willing to subs to, 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 to eat and still are the, um, vital essentials, freeze dried mini nibs because they had the texture of kibble, but they're freeze dried raw. And that allowed me to start incorporating because that's a much healthier food. Obviously it's freeze dried raw, um, than the kibble is that something about that allowed me to introduce canned wet foods to them. And then they accepted it. I, I think because it helped change the flora in the gut, which helped their palate adjust to new foods. I hope that makes sense. Um, that should help her. If not, she might have an allergy. Yeah. Is that like a bacteria thing going on? Rece it's okay. So it's recent with your dog. Um, it could be, could be. Um, what I l really like to do when we just don't know what's going on, because if you go to your vet, they're just going to give you something. They're just going to give you a band aid, and that's you know what. I I'm not I'm not saying that our vets shouldn't be doing these things. Like they're doing the best they can. <coughs> Excuse me, they're doing the best they can with what they know. Um, but. I would love for you to get a Glacier Peaks um, life stress. I think it's called a life stress or a wellness stress scan. Um, but it's it's from G Glacier Peaks. Um, you can DM me and I can get you information on it. Um, and what that is going to do, it's going, it tests, it's an energetic test. So it's going to let you know what your dog it's it goes through so many different things food all kinds of different foods but um also any like environmental um sensitivities it lets you know if they're like they have emotional sensitivity it's it's very um 
There are others out there, of course, like NutraScan, but the Glacier Peaks test goes through so much that I think that most people find more benefit from it. And it's an, it's an invest, it's not super expensive, but it is an investment. And especially if right now, like you don't want it to get any worse. I think it's well worth it. Um, I'm crazy. I use everything clean of chemicals, even in our, no, you're not crazy. I do the same thing. I am very particular. Like our, um, our, what am I thinking? Pest control is organic. Our, uh, lawn, uh, what we put on the lawn is all organic. I don't allow Roundup. Now, I live in a neighborhood with um, uh, like a, a planned neighborhood. We have an HOA, all the things. I can't help what they use in the common areas. So uh, like you're saying um, with the yard, I, you know, when we go out and leave our yard, every, when we get back in, I clean my dog's paws very well. Um, because I can't, I just can't, <laughs> I have no idea what they're using more than likely some sort of Roundup product, um, glyphosate. And I, I, that's not good. So you're not crazy. Um, I don't use chemicals to clean either. Use a lot of white vinegar, Animalio essential oils. Um, Delaney saying her nails might need trimming as well. I'm, I'm sure you've checked her nails, but if you haven't check check her nails, um, Hello. How are you guys? Thank you so much for joining. I'm just scrolling through. I started her on intelligence of nature gut support for pets. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there are a lot of different ways to support the gut and, um, you're already doing raw feeding, which is great. I think is, you know, we want to make sure it's balanced, but I'm sure you are. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I did a podcast interview with Dr. Odette Suter last summer, I believe. And I should know, I should know this, guys. Like, I need to get on the ball with the episode number, right? Right. Anyway, um, anyway, I did an episode with Dr. Odette Suter. If you missed it, um, it's it's available still. Um, go to Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts. And What's really interesting, she actually doesn't recommend probiotics anymore. She only uses um, fecal transplants. I was just like, wow, that's really incredible. That's amazing. Now, that's one veterinarian and one veterinarian's opinion. I find it to be very interesting. Um, but anyway, I, that said, my favorite probiotic is raw goat's milk. That's that's my go-to. Um, I just absolutely love it. My dog thrives on it. Um, okay, great to know. What was it you said again? I'm not sure what you're asking, but maybe the Glacier Peaks test is what you were asking. Glacier Peaks, P-E-A-K-S. Same. Yes. Hello, Jenny Harvey. We'll look into it. Anna, hi, Joy. How are you guys? Same, same, same. Yes, we do too. Um, it's okay. You're on the spot. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I should know this. I should know my episode numbers. I don't know. Anyway, I feel like I should, but I'm a one woman show over here. So love all the questions. Thank you guys so much. I um, am booking I'm booking quite a few guests for the podcast already this year, but one thing I would love to find out from you guys is like what topics you want to hear more about. I, I've told you guys I'm focusing a lot more on health um, because while I absolutely love, I love dog training because I love the bond that you get with your dog through positive reinforcement dog training. And I love giving that bond to other people and their dogs. So like when I go into somebody's home and I'm helping them, I don't train dogs. I train people. And people, I will say a lot of people are kind of taken aback when I say that to them, but they get it. Yes, I have a podcast. It's called The Pet Parenting Reset. I actually have a second podcast um, that I'm a co-host on, but my main podcast is The Pet Parenting Reset. And then the second podcast that I co-host is Pet Health Junkies. Um, but 
so when I go into somebody's home and I tell them that I'm training them and not their dogs, they're like, what is this wizardry you speak of? <laughs> but they, by the end of our first session, they're usually like all on board. They get it. They understand. Um, and one of the biggest things that I think I help people with outside of their dog's behavior is having empathy for their dog. But so I love that. I love that aspect of it. But here's the truth, guys. Like I'm, I'm not some world-class dog trainer. Like I'm not, I'm not Susan Garrett, right? Like I, I do a good job. I help people and their dogs. I, I, I know what to do. I know how to use positive reinforcement. I know how to instruct people how to use positive reinforcement. Like I, I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm a good dog trainer. I'm not a world-class dog trainer, but, um, I, you know, it's not, I haven't been doing it my whole life. I, I just, you know, what am I like six or seven years into it? But um, what I find more interesting and more fulfilling is the connection between our dogs, first of our dog's health and their behavior. And how do we affect their health the best with the foods we put in their body? So with food, we change behavior or we affect behavior, I should say, because there has to be follow through. Like, I, I don't know how many times I have had to tell people that we we don't learn in negatives. Our dogs and cats, they, they don't learn in negatives. When you're yelling no, when you're yelling don't to your dog, okay, and like they are, what do you want your dog to do? Like stop thinking in negatives because we don't learn in negatives. Give your dog something to do instead and instruct them on what you do want them to do instead. And that way they actually have something to learn. No isn't something we can learn. Like, okay, then what should I be doing? It's the same thing for our dogs. But anyway, I digress. So I'm focusing a lot more on health and nutrition and um, specifically traditional Chinese veterinary medicine and um, how we can help our pets thrive. Um, so that's kind of where the podcast is. I, I really want to know like what what you want to hear. I was going to say see when you can see because I, I, I post everything on YouTube and Rumble as well. But um, what do you want to hear about on the podcast? I'm, I'm booking guests. I'm actively booking guests. I have quite a few interviews already lined up this year. But I, I would love to know from you guys, like, what more you want to hear about, what more you want to learn about on the podcast. Um, our half hour is quickly coming to an end, you guys. I had no idea um, you guys were going to be so incredible with all of your questions today. Thank you so much for showing up. I appreciate it. It makes this time fly by. Um, so, yes, I do have a podcast please check it out and follow if you're not already following. It is The Pet Parenting Reset. Cheap ways to give the nutrition that the animals need. You know what? I actually have um, an episode. It was an earlier episode on The Pet Parenting Reset with Kimberly Gautier on um, raw feeding on a budget. And so that's an interesting episode. You and, and I can expand upon it. We can do more episodes like that. Absolutely. I love that. Um, and so raw feeding on a budget is the episode, the first episode. So Kimberly has been on the, the podcast twice, I think. So it was the first episode with Kimberly. Um, and so she had all sorts of ways to save money and feed your, it was about dogs, but it, it applies to our cats as well. And so saving money there, the, number one way you're going to save money is to make your food instead of buying it. So yeah, but then once you decide to make it, there are additional ways in which you can save. Um, and I, I will let you go back to that episode and listen to all of Kimberly's tips. I will say, and I think she says this, but one way that we save money 
and it's not super intentional on our part. Like it, it's, it's a normal thing that we do because my husband is such a foodie. Um, but shopping at Asian markets or other ethnic markets can save you a ton of money. Um, so yeah, that would be my, I guess two <laughs> best tips, make it yourself and shop at ethnic markets. Um, Asian markets are, are, there are some Mexican markets um, around us, but yeah, you, you it's, they're so much cheaper. <laughs> Guys, they are so much cheaper. You're probably not going to find the same um, quantity, variety of organics. And it depends on where you live, but yeah. So I, I'm glad to be able to help you guys today. I'm going to try my darndest um, to continue these live Q and A's every Thursday. Um, I will not be able to do it at the end of this month, but I am not a veterinarian. No, thank you for that question. I am not a veterinarian. Um, I am studying with a veterinarian uh, to be a pet health coach. So um, that's a that's a new thing. Um, so like people have health coaches um, who do not replace doctors, but work with, um, you know, what, so your doctor can diagnose, your doctor can run your labs, all the things, and your health coach is going to help you better understand and give you alternatives and more generally more holistic options for how to manage um, whatever your diagnosis is. So uh, this is a very, very new thing. And I'm studying with a veterinarian to do the same thing for pets. I'm really excited about it. Um, and those principles are, it, those, it, it is based in traditional Chinese veterinary medicine. So awesome. I, yeah, I'm here. I'm happy to help. I, um, I, I haven't like officially posted anything about it and I don't have, um, you know, coaching health coaching services available on my website yet. Uh, but it will be coming very, very soon. So, um, all right. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend coming up. It's our, what is it? It's our second weekend or I guess last, I guess the first was on, a. Uh, Sunday last weekend. So it's our first full weekend in January. Enjoy it. And um, please like reach out, DM me. And uh, if you have questions or if I said something, you're like, hey, what did you say? What were you talking about? You can DM me. I'm happy to help and answer anything I can. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend. Please do go listen to the podcast. It's the Pet Parenting Reset. And with that, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for being awesome today. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.